wondering how you can become better at running your business? Entrepreneurship can be stressful. There's too much to do and not enough time. If you're isolated in your daily decisions, have no fear. Success and balance are possible. Welcome to the Small Business Answer Man podcast, where you master the art of running a successful business using practical advice from experts who want to help you succeed. Now, here's your host, Gary Wilbers. Welcome. We're glad to have you back again this week. I told you my goal this third quarter was to really find guests that can make a difference for you because you as the business owner make a difference for your business. And today I think I found that guest again. And Lori, would you share with our listeners, what problem will you help them solve today? The problem I will help people solve is that problem of distraction, the thoughts in your head that are distracting you from focusing on the projects that you know you really need to get done. That is great because I tell you what, we know there's lots of distractions in the world. So today we've got with us Lori Seitz and she's the leading authority on improving productivity and engagement through workplace well-being. She is the founder of the Zen Leadership Program for Results Focused Professionals. With a comprehensive background in wellness and communication strategy, Lori helps executives create focused, resilient, and collaborative teams that can move projects forward with less stress and drama. Listen to Lori on her own podcast, too, called Fine is a Four-Letter Word where she engages guests in conversations about how they've grown from time in their lives when things were decidedly not fine. Lori, it is great to have you on the podcast. Welcome. My pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm so excited about this conversation because as I talked to you about off camera, we talked a little bit about, you know, I work with a lot of small business owners and read some of your background and you know that challenge and struggle that comes in there. So let's really kind of really talk about this because the challenge with small business owners, they need to be a high performing executive for their business and be that business leader. So what do leaders need to do to really sharpen their leadership skills and some of that decision-making abilities to really find that creativity that really can help their business take off? We live in a society that is so distracted, like so many things are going on around us and so many things and, and entrepreneurs and small business owners tend to be a little ADD, even if they're not for, um, like formally diagnosed with that. Yes. And so distraction is even higher for us. And so we need to find a way to minimize those distractions, manage stress, stress that those two things are really what I focus on helping people do. And um, because if you're distracted, if you're stressed, you're not able to focus. You're not able to be creative. You're not going to be coming up with any innovative ideas. You're not, you're not uh, going to be your best in relationships, whether it's with your clients or your team or your family, which you need to support you. Um, and so how do you manage the stress? Because stress is a natural part. It's not going to go away. You're not going to eliminate it, but how do you manage it? And how do you manage those distractions in your head so that they're not keeping you from doing what you need to do? Yeah, I think that's so critical because for business leaders and executives and business owners, they really make the wheel turn. And the problem is if they got too many wheels turning inside, they can't do that very effectively. And really what it becomes, I feel like, is a vortex, you know? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like I tell people all the time, kind of a weird analogy, but it's like the toilet, you know? It's just going round and round, and it's creating that challenge for them. And I think that's the thing we have to really realize is how can we make those changes? What would be some of the things you would say really on improving that productivity and how we can really... Because everybody wants to say it's time management. No, it's not. You know, time management is not it. We all get 24 hours in a day. But what is it really about? I love that you just said it's not time management, Gary, because it's not. It is, um, you know, you can take all the productivity, time productivity, time management classes and courses that you want. And you can time block your calendar and have it all set up and organized. But if the thoughts in your head are keeping you distracted, then that time 
management system isn't going to work. If you're still thinking about the argument that you had with your partner last night and you're not able to focus on putting together this proposal for a client or whatever. So it's about like, what can you do to manage those thoughts, those, that the chaos in your head. And one of the biggest things that I recommend to people, I'm almost afraid to say this word because I know it brings up a lot of resistance. All right. But, I, and so I reframe it. I will say it's learning to do some grounding exercises, mm -hmm. but it's, may also sometimes be called meditation, but we're yeah. not going to talk about meditation because people say, I'm not good at meditation. I got it. I got all the reasons why. Um, but doing some grounding exercises and teaching yourself how to stay calm, because if you're practicing grounding exercises outside of a time when you really need that calm, it's going to come more naturally to you when you're in a chaos situation. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, definitely. Well, I think it's so important because I'm glad you say that because I will bring that up because I coach business owners. And when you say meditation, oh, I've tried that. I can't do that. So I love the idea of let's reframe it and talk about the grounding exercises because I'm a believer in this. And I believe in within two minutes, you can change a negative in the positive and what business owners have to leave. So can you share with them a little bit about when we're talking about grounding exercises, how they can do that? Because I've seen within two minutes to five minutes, you can change that perception totally um, that can happen in that area. And can you give some feedback on that? Yes, a hundred percent. You're right. Two to five minutes. People think they hear meditation and they're like, I don't have an hour to sit on a mat with cross-legged, no thoughts in my head. I, I just don't have that. And you don't need that. Like you said, two to five minutes. And if you would just sit and focus on your breathing, like, yes, thoughts are going to keep coming in and out of your head, but focus on your breathing, really deep breathing. Like, of course, anybody who's listening to this is breathing, right? right. But, but we hope so. <laughs> yeah, right. But most of us are breathing very shallowly. We don't even realize that we're not taking full breaths. And so taking, sitting for two, three, four minutes, and just taking really deep breaths in all the way down to your abdomen and then letting it go as if you were like releasing a heavy weight and just breathing all the way out and just doing that for, you could set a timer for two minutes. What you're doing is you're completely resetting your nervous system and you're rewiring your brain. This is the coolest science and stuff and research stuff behind it. The, the stuff, right? Um, the science and research behind how this works is really fascinating. Like you can rewire your brain to make yourself more successful, to make yourself more productive. And this is one way of doing it. It's super simple. And people tend to dismiss because it's so simple. Oh, it can't be that easy. I can't do this. Like it's not going to work. It's just two minutes. I'm, I don't, but it, it, it absolutely works. Yeah, I've seen this and I've done it myself. And at times, I'll be honest, I get the afternoon law um, that I'm sure some of our business owners get because they're normally hard workers and um, are busy, crazy. And I'll take that two to five minutes and it reprograms it. Another area I see that it really helps is, as I talked about earlier, you had that confrontation and now you're walking out of that from your office or wherever it was. And now you're going right into another meeting. It could even be with a client that, you know, you know, you want to put your best foot forward or you pick up that phone and you take that call. That same frustration comes across. And this is where I tell people all the time, you know, in two minutes, you can change that. When you make that change, it changes who you are and it changes the dynamic in your organization, not only for you but for the people that work for you. And I think that's the thing we forget about is that leaders, we bring on the others. I mean, I early in my career, I said people could know my attitude within the first 15 minutes I walked into the, the office and they felt it. And so we've got to be conscious of that because we create that atmosphere in our offices. And I'm sure you've seen that with leaders you've worked with. Yes, we are totally on the same page here. We are energetic beings, like not to get, I mean, I can talk about spirituality all day, but we're not talking about that. But at, at, like, again, science, we are energetic beings 
that's why animals are so perceptive about picking up people's energy when somebody comes into a room or maybe you've done it you walk into a room and you're like something feels weird here like did these people and maybe the people other two other people in the room just had an argument but you don't know you're just feeling weird energy we feel that and so you're right about setting the tone for your organization for um your your own environment like you're in control of that we were talking earlier about stress and not being able to eliminate stress but you can choose your response to it instead of reacting like a from reptilian brain you can choose your response and when you practice these grounding exercises it helps you more naturally respond to circumstances you can't necessarily change the circumstances but how you respond to them you can change that you can control that that and then that changes everything else yeah that is great we're going to talk more about this when we come back from this short commercial break so stay with us love how it's going you're comfortable good mm -hmm. We'll go into some of the gratitude and then yep. kind of how spirituality in the workplace, if that's okay. Sure. And now back to the show. Well, I love what you're saying about that. And I think something else that comes to a piece of this is we really do feel that you got to figure out the grounding. And we're going to give you some tools to help you with this at the end. And Lori's got some ways to be able to help you in that area of that learning some simple methods and stuff on that side of it. But let's also talk about that gratitude, how that really can transform our work life and really some things that we can incorporate into our daily routine to make this gratitude easy. Because people hear this all the time, Lori, I think, because it's not new. But the only thing is, people are still not doing it. And it makes a huge difference in their work life. So can you share your philosophies on gratitude in the workplace? Yeah, I mean, gratitude is the highest energetic vibration you can get to. We we're just talking about being energetic beings. And when you are in gratitude, when you are feeling, feeling that feeling of gratitude, you're radiating at the highest energetic level. Now, when you do this, it's not just this woo woo thing of like, oh, I feel good. I'm all happy. You actually attract more success to you when you're in that that more grateful state. Think about it. Do you want to hang out with people who are complaining and criticizing all the time? Or would you rather hang out with people who have a more positive energy about them? We want that positive energy. Yeah, absolutely. And then the other cool thing, like I, I love bringing in the research and science about it because it, it, people can tend to think it's a little bit woo-woo, but there's been research that practicing gratitude strengthens the neural pathways in your brain. It releases feel-good chemicals, dopamine and serotonin, um, reduces physical pain. You know, a lot of people are going through life with back pain or headaches and things like that. And I'm not saying it's going to eliminate it completely, but it has been shown to reduce pain, improve sleep quality. Like how many people do you talk to who are like, oh, I can't sleep? The more grateful you are, the better you sleep. Right. <laughs> and um, reduces cortisol, which is the stress hormone and increases the effectiveness of your immune system. And, you know, nobody functions well when they're not feeling well, when they're sick. And yeah. so the, uh, like all of these things, it's again, it's so simple. And then layering on top of it outside of the science, showing gratitude, sharing your appreciation with your team members, with your clients, it's a differentiating factor and it makes people feel good. So they want to work with you. Yeah. And that makes a big difference for your team creates a higher performing team. I saw a stat before um, teams that receive more praise and gratitude and thankfulness, they perform at a five times higher performing level than teams that do not. Yes. And then I also saw a study that said that's true. And 65% of Americans didn't see receive any um, recognition in the workplace last year. Yeah. So the uh, combines with it. Let's talk a little bit on gratitude. I'm curious with your research, what have you found? Does it make a difference? Because some people, if they just think it, 
And I've also heard where if they write it down, that can really solidify it in the brain even more and stuff. Is there any research or anything that you've seen or what in your experience have you experienced in that area? I, I'm not thinking of any research specifically to that, but I do know that, you know, for some, for some people, keeping a gratitude journal is just like, it's another to thing on their to-do list. And they're like, like that kind of is for me too. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> So I don't necessarily keep a gratitude journal, um, but it does, you know, there's that mind, the brain, um, like handwriting it actually, yep. that connection between um, journaling and the brain and it helps clarify thinking and things like that. So I think if, um, if you're inclined to be somebody who likes to journal, then it would be a good thing. And then if not, like, don't stress yourself out about it. But if you just think about as you're falling asleep, maybe, or as you're waking up and you're brushing your teeth, what are the things in your life that you're grateful for as you're, you know, pouring your cup of coffee in the morning, just make it part of the routine to focus on and, and contemplate a little bit. What am I grateful for? Business owners and leaders struggle in this because it's always about looking forward because the next day you've got to move forward, you know, because whatever happened yesterday, if you sit there and live in that, no matter if it was great or if it was a bad day, you had to move forward. And we learn that so much, but as this is one of those areas, I think that it's kind of like that secret weapon yes. and it's really so simple because it sounds so simple, but it's so huge because if we don't take gratitude in what's happening in our lives, we always, we start to feel like we're kind of on that Ferris wheel that doesn't stop or, you know, the mouse that goes around and around in the circle. And that's what feels that stress and that overwhelm and like every day's the same. And we're not taking that gratitude. I said, I wish that early in my career, I had some of them notes now of back then of what I was learning and what I, you know, really cherished on that side of it, because it'd be something to look back on. But I've started doing this over the last um, five to 10 years. And it's not every day. Some days I miss, but pretty regular I do it. And it's amazing. I pulled up one of them books the other day. I was looking two years back and I was to know right then what was going on in my life at that point in time and what I was appreciative for. So this is one, I'm, again, you know, we're talking about some of those things that leaders, if you're making a difference for you. And that's what I said in this third quarter, why I wanted you to come on, Lori, is because we they're running their organizations. They've got to make a difference for them. Then guess what happens? When they become better, they make a difference in their organization. Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing about that reminding yourself to, um, or bringing to the top of your mind, those things that you're grateful for and celebrating them. Because as entrepreneurs, we tend to do a terrible job of celebrating. It's like you said, oh yeah, I did that yesterday, but what am I doing today? What's happening tomorrow? But focusing on or allowing yourself to celebrate your successes, even if they're small, means you're signaling, again, this is going to sound a little bit woo-woo, but it you're signaling to the universe that you appreciate what you've already gotten so that you can open the door for more. When you're not appreciative, why would, why would anybody, whether you're talking about God, the universe, or even another person, if you're, somebody's giving you something and you're not appreciative of it, why would they give you more? Yeah, that's so true. And that's where I wanted to go was let's talk about spirituality in the workplace, because I don't mind talking about this. And I know Good. it means multiple things that other people, and like you said already, it doesn't always, it's God, it's nature, it's what it means to you. But let's talk about why is that so important that really, if we bring out our spirituality in the workplace? I believe that spirituality has really nothing to do with religion. It may be a piece of it, but it, we're not talking about religion at all here. And whatever you want to call that higher power, you can even be an atheist, but your, your higher power, your inner truth, I don't care what you call it, but tapping into that energy, that spirit, that, that maybe your soul, whatever it is, that's our human, that's our human, human, what is the word? humanness, um, <laughs> humanity, there you go. Um, it makes us 
more compassionate, more open. Again, it's, um, it's about tapping into your inner truth so that you can follow what is right for you. And again, you know, at the top of the conversation, we were talking about distractions and so many people don't allow themselves to tap into that inner voice, whether it, a lot of people call it intuition, um, that I don't know what to do. We get caught up into, I got all these things to do, or I don't know what to do. I'm frustrated. I hear, you know, you can have all the advisors and coaches possible and, and they serve a purpose. But at the end of the day, what is your inner voice telling you to do? And that's where the spirituality comes in because it's, um, you're just allowing yourself to hear that inner voice. Yeah, I love that because I think it really allows the person to really show their authentic self. And I think sometimes they try to separate that. And when you try to separate that, what you get is, you know, they don't know what you get, your employees and stuff. And then even for you, it creates a frustration because, oh, I'm trying to be this way, but I'm being something different at home. And, right. you know, and then the challenge is, is to be quite honest, as entrepreneurs, what happens is we start to bring that home. <laughs> My wife told me early in our career one time and stuff said, well, that's not how we do it here, you know, and <laughs> said it varies much, you know, you know, it's not like you're the boss here, you know, come home and I started dictating orders, you know, we need to do this, this, this and stuff on that side. Instead, we've got to live together and co but it's the same way in the workplace. The way you create a culture and people to get high performing is them being part of that process. I mean, look at all winning teams. We can go to any philosophy and, you know, true synergy in a team is not one plus one equals two. One plus one equals 10 or a hundred or a thousand. So, right. So. And, and when you look at the, the root of the word of spirituality, it's about your spirit. It's bringing your spirit which I think includes your personality. It includes your entire, the embodiment of who you are. And when people can bring that to the workplace, everyone benefits, clients, the team, like the world, just allowing yourself to be who you are. Well, we've talked about a lot of things and sorry to say, always when I get in a great conversation, this time goes quick. I can't believe um, it's already up that time, but I just want to share with them because you've got a nice call to action because we talked about the grounding doesn't have to be 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, those type of things. So would you share them with the um, gift that you're going to give our listeners about the, um, I think you've got a six minute grounding exercise that's available to them? That's exactly what it is. It's a six minute grounding exercise. It um, has been known beforehand uh, is a gratitude meditation, but it will help listeners get into that space of feeling gratitude for things that have already happened, things that are currently happening and things that are that they're looking forward to bringing into their life in six short minutes. Well, that's wonderful. Please, if you've never tried it, my challenge to is don't try it once try it for a week and then go for two weeks and try to really give yourself that time. Six minutes. Tell me if you don't have six minutes, well, guess what? You've got bigger problems than because the challenge is your business is messed up. So you're going to have to get some help to be able to get that done because you can do this in six minutes and see that difference that you make. Thank you so much for offering that to our listeners, Lori. And we'll have that in show notes because it's zenrabbit.com backslash gratitude hyphen meditation, but we've got it in show notes because we know you're not just listening to us and you can write it down. So it's in show notes. You go there, you click on it. It's going to take you directly to that. Also, Lori's website is zenrabbit.com. So if you want some more great information, I looked at her website earlier and there's some great information on her website, some blogs, some other information that you can get. So please go to that and she would be willing to reach out to her. And you know, if you're interested in this topic, that's what she does is she speaks about it. She talks about it and has got some different courses that's available. So please reach out to her um, in those areas. Lori, anything else you'd like to share with the audience there? I, you said it so well about committing to doing a week because it's like anything else. It just takes a little time to adjust to it. 
So good advice. I guarantee you, you start it, you're going to love it. I, I do it several times a day. On most days, don't get it done every day. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm perfect and stuff. But when I do, it makes a difference. And I got a nice session in this morning because I knew I had podcasts coming up. And a lot of times in between, I cut multiple podcasts on the same days. I'll do a couple minutes. So because the thing is, I want to be present with Lori. But my next guest, I want to be present for that person, and I'm being able to be present with them. Lori, before I let you go, I ask every guest the same question. What's your best advice you would give to business owners? Yeah, well, it has nothing to do with the conversation we just had, <laughs> <laughs> but, but it kind of does. I mean, it's one, I have two pieces of advice. Can I give two? Sure. All right. One is the um, getting yourself around a, building a strong network, because no matter what happens, if you have a strong network, you can recover from situations that maybe not didn't go your way and you can celebrate. And, you know, we talked about celebrating and how you raise your vibration and more good stuff comes to you. And then that second one does have to do with what we just talked about. And it's like, get yourself grounded because it will help you make better decisions and be more creative and be more productive and ultimately be more profitable. Yeah. Well, Lori, it has been great to have you here on the podcast. Thank you again for joining us today. My pleasure. Please check out our website, zenrabbit.com. It's all in show notes. And my action item, always try to give an action item after this. My action item is go get our six minute grounding exercise. It's free. Go do the link that's available there. And for six minutes, do that meditation. And I want you to do that for five days consistently. And what that means, if you miss a day, you start over from number one and you go back to five, you get to five. And when you get to five, if you feel like it's not making a difference, Lori and I will be okay with saying, okay, it's not for you. But I think you will find out it will make a difference for you. So that's your action item today. Come back next week. We're going to have another guest. Remember, in this third quarter, I'm working to help business owners and entrepreneurs really make themselves better because when they become better, they make their teams better, their company grow, and they're really able to reach their goals that you have. So again, if you like this conversation, share it, like it, let other people know about it. That's how our podcast keeps growing. Thanks again for joining us. Make it a great day. That's all the time we have for this week. To continue your journey, head over to smallbusinessanswerman.biz to access the tools and resources mentioned in today's show. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and share it with someone who would benefit from listening at smallbusinessanswerman.biz. Until next time, remember, when you find the right solutions, your business grows and you get your time back.